I'm not sure if you can actually see it. It's, it's not swimming with the uh, the sauce um, like what you get at a sweet and sour, you know, dish at a restaurant. Um, it's just nicely glazed with the sauce. So <laughs> let's see how it tastes. Mm. What comes to your mind when you first think about sweet and sour dish like the sweet and sour pork? For me, when it comes to a sweet and sour dish, it brings back memory once that I had it very long time ago when I was studying in America and in the uni days. I actually tried once and I was really surprised at the dish because I have never had anything like that before. I know it's one of the most popular dish on the menu in a Western style Chinese restaurant. But for me, trying out, which I had once, the sweet and sour pork, I was just surprised that the dish itself is basically swam with lots of sticky, gluey gravy that is full of sugar and ketchup. It is so sweet. Do you think a sweet and sour pork especially originally is a Chinese dish? No, it is not. <laughs> I've done some research and I found out that a sweet and sour pork itself is actually a westernized sweet and, sour, sweet and sour dish. So it's not a Chinese dish, it's a westernized dish. Now, but although the Chinese itself, the Chinese has been making and combining sweet and sour by using vinegar thousands of years ago. So the Chinese has been making it, but the sweet and sour pork itself is not originally a Chinese dish. It is a Western dish. So what I'm going to do today, because I don't really make the Western style sweet and sour dish at home. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to make a sweet and sour dish that is different from the normal and the popular sweet and sour dish that you get at the restaurant. So for my sweet and sour dish, I'm going to use fish. I'm going to use a white fish fillet. This fish right here is a rockling fillet. The other ingredients, very simple. Only two other things that I'm going to use to flavor my dish. Five spring onions over here. I'm just going to use the white sections, the lower, lower part of the spring onions, the white sections. And I'm going to use ginger. These two, as you know, they are standard Chinese flavoring when it comes to Chinese dish. And the other one, which is the trinity of Chinese flavor, the other one is garlic, which I'm not using garlic because garlic will be too overpowering for the dish.
As you can see, it is very simple and very easy to prepare all the ingredients. It didn't take long. And all I've done is cut up the fish into bite pieces and marinated the fish and cut up the white sections of the spring onions, thinly slice the ginger into thin strips, get the sauce mixture ready so it's easy and quick when we want to make the sauce for the dish and the chicken stock. I didn't have any homemade chicken stock so I bought the carton chicken stock. Now if you don't have any stock, you can just use water, it's okay. And lastly, to thicken the, the gravy and the sauce, I have made the starch slurry by mixing tapioca flour or tapioca starch with some water. So what I'm going to do next, which I'm ready to do, is to fry the fish. I'm going to turn the heat down and then I'm going to slowly add the starch slurry a little bit at a time. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe, my home version of a sweet and sour dish, a sweet and sour fish. It is different from the sweet and sour dish that you can find at a Chinese restaurant in the West. It is different and I'm not using any tomato ketchup and also I'm not using pineapple. Now this dish itself, the flavour comes from the ginger and the spring onions 
and the sweetness and the sourness it comes from the rice wine and the rice vinegar as well as the sugar that adds a little bit of sweetness in this dish if you like this video remember to subscribe and share with your friends and family my name is victor ku thanks for watching